everybody, it's Eugene. And today what I'm gonna be doing is a little project, a little craft project, uh, something I haven't done before, but since I'm doing it, I thought, hey, what the heck, I'll record it. And then, you know, maybe some people will look at it and they may uh, try it for themselves. So the project for today is to create an April tag out of something which is a little bit more sturdy. So in Recon 3D, April tags are used for uh, setting or establishing a reference measurement. And when you create a scan and you enter in your reference measurement, your, the distance between those two points is pretty much set. So everything gets globally scaled to those measurements. So that makes the project a lot more accurate. Now, if you're not using the April tags, then it just defaults to, you know, whatever scale that it thinks it is, which sometimes is okay and sometimes is not okay okay it just depends but you can get much better accuracy if you use april tags now in the recon 3d app if you turn the targeting on there's a little picture of the april tag there i'll pop it up on the screen but when you click on it you can print it or share it or whatever and normally people will just print it out on an eight and a half by 11 or a4 sheet of paper and uh, just make sure you get the whole target in there make sure you don't cut anything off so make sure you scale to fit it to whatever uh, paper size you're going to be using and the April tag is really a nine by nine grid of squares, like a checkerboard or something like that. And the pattern of which ones are black and white, um, you know, throughout the whole target basically makes a unique pattern. And that unique pattern can be detected in Recon 3D. Now there's actually a whole family of targets that can be used, but for the purposes of Recon 3D, you print the same target out twice, you lay it out, measure, enter the value, and everything gets taken care of once you process the point cloud. So today what I'm going to be doing is creating an April tag. And originally what I did was I actually 3D printed a 9x9 nine nine, uh, grid or square. And you might be able to see that a little bit here. Okay, I know it's a little bit shiny or whatever. But um, on the back here I've got some supports and I've got a little bit of space for a quarter 20 nut over here and over here and that's so I can mount it this way and I can level it and I can have two targets and I can you know keep them off the ground make sure that they're level and basically if both are level and at the same height I can basically shoot with a uh, disto uh, meter or laser disto or something and then get the measurement between the two or I can mount them this way I can mount them face to face and basically get a measurement that way as well so this is something that um, I may work on another time but uh, for today what happened was I was at the store a very popular store here and uh, I haven't been walking around and I noticed that they had these square panels and you see that it's just like a frame uh, I guess it's used for maybe arts and crafts or painting or something like that but it's square it's about the size that I need and I you know and it was low cost uh, I don't remember exactly but I, know, I was like maybe ten dollars fifteen dollars or something like that so with something like this it's already ready-made I think all I have to do is paint it and get the uh, checkers on here so this is the there's actually uh, well there was two in a package which is nice so I need two so uh, you know it was two for uh, you know the price that I paid and uh, this is the label that I found here but I'll put a picture up on the uh, in the video here and you can see what it is but uh, this particular one is 10 by 10 inches or 25.4 uh, centimeters by 25.4 centimeters uh, so you know you can divide it however you want so 10 inches by 10 inches I could easily make a, uh, a 9 by 9 grid and then leave half an inch uh, on the edge so what's going to matter here is that everything is perfectly centered so the way I'm going to do this is first off, I need to paint this. So I'm going to start painting the face of this white on both of them. Then once it dries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grid or what I'll do is at least mark the center lines and make sure that I have everything uh, properly centered, maybe a border and uh, yeah, maybe I'll do the border and I'll do the center lines that way. And then what I'm going to do is I have one inch wide tape, like painter's tape. So what I need to do then is I can put strips of paint down, nine strips one way and then nine strips the other way. And then just with a little uh, blade or knife, I'm just going to cut out the squares that I want black. And then with that, I'm going to be spray painting white with this and black with this. So these, this is just something new I'm going to try. I don't know how it's going to work, but this is a, uh, it says chalk on it. Um, it's a product from a company called Bear. 
which is very popular in uh, for paints and stuff like that. But it's a it's a flat white, so it's not quite a uh, primer, but it's not shiny. Okay, that, apparently it's it's a chalk finish, so that's good. That's what I want. And this one is the black, same thing. It's not uh, doesn't look all that shiny, or whatever. So I'm gonna try it and see how it works. Hopefully it'll work okay. And again, I'm just gonna make two of these. And once they're done, I'll test them out in Recon 3D. So that's what I'm gonna to get to. Let's do it. And I'm gonna set up for painting. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just shake up the uh, can here. Just give it a good shake. And all right, I think what I'm gonna do is just do a quick test here. Um, I only need to paint the top. I'm not gonna worry about the sides or anything like that, but let me just give it a go and see what this finish is like. Hopefully it's, uh, I got the right paint here. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Actually, it looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I actually like that finish. Uh, yeah, that looks very flat, looks really good. So I'm gonna give this a couple of coats. Let me do this one here. Usually wood will, that first coat is just gonna get soaked up in the wood, but i painted a little bit heavy. But yeah, it's funny, it doesn't take a lot. That's not too bad. Let me do the other one again. Yeah, I can see it's soaking up here. Yeah, in fact, I can see it's splitting over here a little bit, but that'll be fine. I think for this little uh, experiment should be okay. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that and we'll come back later once it's dry and see if it needs another coat. Okay folks, so what we've got here is one of the panels and I'm gonna show you a finished one to start with. Let me grab that, hold on, here we go. So that's one of the, uh, well, it's prepped. So basically what I've got is, it's a little hard to see, but I think you can see the little squares that are here, okay? So uh, basically what I did, I marked the middle on in both directions here, and then I laid down a strip of tape. Uh, uh, the middle of the tape is basically running along the middle of the center line here and here. And then I just started, um, you know, layering on top or uh, side by side, putting adjacent strips and making the full nine by nine grid. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I've put this other colored tape on the edge because this has to be white underneath. So uh, when I'm cutting, I know that this is just a, a white border that's gonna be on here. So we're gonna do the exact same thing on this one here. Now, let me just move this out of the way. And this one here, um, you'll see the grain has popped a little bit and that's just because it got wet or whatever. The other one was actually a little bit better or in better condition. So no big deal. Um, I think for what we're gonna be doing is absolutely fine. So what I've done here so far is I've measured the center and this is not exactly 10 inches across. So, but you, you can see I'm kind of on the five mark here. I kind of split the difference. It was a little shorter here. And then I've done the same thing this way. And I've got about 10 inches here, mark the center at five. And the other thing that I've done is I've marked a little mark over here, okay, on each side. Okay, so there, there, and all the way around. Okay, I've got a little, little mark that's there. Now what I need to do, and this is the tricky part, is getting dirt on the tape here, I want that, um, is, let's see where the tape ends, all right over here. What I'm gonna do is get a strip that's about the length just about the length there, I'm gonna cut that off. And what I need to do is I need to align this right at the center here. So right at about the center. Now, in this case, normally I would, you know, you could mark the tape and everything else, okay? But for what we're doing, I think it's gonna be just fine. It's gonna work. So that side is fine. And then I'm gonna go up on this side and I'm gonna look to see where that mark is. It's actually over here. And I'm gonna put the center of the tape and I'm doing this by eye, so it's not, uh, yeah, that looks that looks really good to me. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold that over. So that's basically set up there. And we're gonna do the exact same thing along that way. So I'm gonna get a piece, it's about the length, 
do the exact same thing. So I'm going to line one this way so it's just in the middle of the tape. Right there. Oops, I need a bit more there to bite with. Right about there. Okay. Alrighty. And I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Make sure that it's aligned. Well, I almost nailed it right on. Well, let me just get it right there. That's perfect. Put that down gently. Okay, so we've got our center right there. And from here on in, <coughs> excuse me, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to put one line, uh, maybe one or two lines on the this direction, and then I'll put another two lines that way. And I'll keep going and going until I get nine. So let me do this next one, and I may just fast forward this. You'll get the idea. I'll do a couple. I'm just going to make sure it's lined up with this tape. No gaps. Okay, really, really small gaps, just like that. Perfect. That one's good. I'm going to do another one up here. And then I'm going to turn it sideways. So like that. You can almost tuck the tape right to the edge, and it seems to... Just take, just like that, beautiful. You can hardly see, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny gap in there. Hardly, hardly visible. But hey, for what we're doing, it's gonna be absolutely fine. I'm gonna turn it this way now, like that. Let me make one here. Okay, like that, looks good. And I'm gonna continue this process. And at some point here, I'm just gonna fast forward this and you're gonna get the idea and you'll see what I end up with at the end. And if I keep talking, big deal. Okay, that's good there. So I got three and three. Now we're gonna get to five. Like that. Like that. Okay, looks good. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Switch it up. That's good. Right there. Good. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two rows each side left. So I'm gonna go like this and like this. And like this and like this. the last one. Okay, now I'm going to put the tiny bit of gap there. I'm going to put the, uh, the border on with the uh, green tape here. And that's just because I know this part here has to be all white and I don't want to cut that out at all. But I know exactly where the limit is here. Like that. Good. Uh, I think I'm missing two here. Am I not? Yeah, I am actually. Hello. Getting ahead of myself. I need two more. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, looked short. Okay. There. And here. 
Okay. Good. Now I can put these on. That's it. That's it right there. So you can see all the little grids there. So now what I have to do is I've got to start cutting out all the squares that I want to be black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up the, um, the target here. So that's what it looks like. So this is in Recon 3D. I just brought it up and you can print this out or you can share it, save it to your photos, whatever. So you can see here I've got white, white, black, white, white, and the rest are all black. So I need to cut out these squares. Then the next line has to come out completely. And I've got white, black, a lot of white, black. So I basically have to follow this particular pattern and end up with the exact same thing. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'll just keep going here. Well, this is it. So I've got two of these targets, tapes all out. Um, it's not perfect, I can tell. But again, this, these are prototypes. These are the very first ones that I'm making like this um, in the future. I don't know. I'll, I'll look at uh, different ways of making these, maybe better. Uh, maybe there's a way to, uh, you know, print uh, the, the pattern or get it laser engraved with acrylic and stuff like that. But just as a concept, um, I'm pretty happy with what I got here. It's time to spray paint. We're going to spray paint these parts, these open parts, black. And then once we let it dry, we'll peel everything away and we'll see what we got. Okay, we're here. We got this black paint coming up. Let's see what happens. Not gonna go too heavy on the first coat. Just get it so it fills in those gaps. If you go too heavy on the first one, it just leaks or it gets into the under the tape or whatever. So I'm just gonna let that dry a bit. And then I'm gonna come back over it. So give it a second. I'm gonna keep doing this. Once it's all done, I'll show you what uh, what we got. Okay, well, these have had a chance to dry here and what I'm gonna do now is just peel away the tape and I'm hoping that this is gonna work out. So let's see what we've got. And uh, I just gotta pull away everything. I just use this knife in case I need it. But let's just start slowly peeling this off. Okay, a little bit of bleeding there. Hopefully this came out okay, so that's all right. And this piece here can come off. 
I was afraid of a little bit of bleeding there, and I can see that a little bit is going through. Hopefully it didn't come too bad. All right. call that a success uh, it looks pretty good there's some little minor discrepancies um, little things that could be cleaned up but to be honest I think that's okay I think that's going to be detected of course the real test will be uh, will recon 3d detect the target and so we're going to try that out once we get the other one done and then uh, I'll do it just a very quick test with these two on the ground so long as they pop up in the view that means that they've been uh, detected so we'll try that next Okay, there we go. So we've got two targets on the ground. These are the ones we made. These are prototypes. There's there's the small little defects with them, but overall, uh, I can see that I think they're okay. I, from you know from this distance anyway, you can see that they look pretty clean, and you know they're nice and durable. Um, you know it's not like paper; it's going to blow away. You put these on the ground; they're going to stick around for a while. Uh, so the real test here, though, is going to be whether or not they can get detected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up Recon 3D. I'm gonna call this just a target test. It's good, and I'm gonna put the target detection on. Now, the, the distance between them, I don't really care. Uh, that's about, I don't know, I'm gonna leave it in meters. I'll say it's like 1.2 uh, meters. Okay, for now, I just am mostly interested in whether or not they get detected. So I'm gonna give this a go here, and actually I'll start off the targets. I mean, let me start off the targets, and then I'll come back. So. Let me scan off the targets. Okay, so it's picking this up. I'm gonna go, okay. Those green boxes, that's good news. That means that they are detected very well. And that to me means it is a success. So just to keep this video a reasonable time, I am not going to run a full test with these. I'm okay with what I've got here. And I think we'll call it a day. So next test, we're gonna take these we're going to actually, you know, scan like a vehicle or something like that using the actual uh, targets with a scale. So anyway, hope you hopefully you found that interesting. It's, uh, you know, a way to make some of these uh, April tags. They can be quite useful and they help to improve the accuracy in Recon 3D. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.